Hi everybody, it is Thursday, August 17th. We are now in New Orleans. Uh, we got in in the crack of dawn this morning and uh, I've just been taking care of some stuff. Uh, just got a message that for that Icelandic project, they're sending me the last trek uh, for the project to not today. So I just wrote back, said I can get to it tomorrow. Um, got a really nice email from Phil Collins and he sounds good. Uh, so that makes me really happy. Um, getting ready to head off. I, this worked out really good. Um, I've been having problems with my volume uh, pot on my ding wall. Uh, it's, it's been kind of crapping out. I use it a lot as a volume uh, rather than having a volume pedal. I'm constantly working with it and it started crapping out and I contacted Sheldon Dingwall who immediately sent me a replacement one and uh, the my bass tech out here who's he does double duty it, it's bass and drum tech um, uh, Lee Scott um, he tracked down a place out here in New Orleans uh, called Strange Guitars a guy named Benjamin Strange it's his shop and he owns a Dingwall and he said he's not really busy today, so they they just sent my bass over with a runner, to, and he's going to replace the volume pot on it. So I'm grateful of that. I've got a, a, a second bass, the one I'm using for the recording, so I'm going to take that and do sound check with it. But hopefully the other one will be back for showtime because we're out of here after the show. Um, but uh, I invited him to the show tonight, so it'll be nice to meet him and thank him in person uh, for this. So I'm going to put a little music up because I will wander the hall. Um, and uh, I think it's the Orpheum we're playing here, which I've played many, many times in the past um, with different people. I've played there with Toto. I've played there with, I think, um, I might have played there with Judith Owen. Um, I've played there with Lyle before, different acts. So it would be kind of nice to go back, but I'll give it a, a good walk through and see, you know, what kind of little nooks and crannies I can get into, what kind of trouble I can create. But I thought I'd put up a little piece of music today, and I'm going to go back and revisit a, a, a project that I did, which I really in, enjoyed. It was really a, a, an adventure. Uh, it's from 1981, and uh, it's Tanya Tucker. And the album's called Should I Do It? And uh, this was really a, a fun project. She was she was um, uh, going with, I believe, Glenn Campbell at the time, because Glenn was, was hanging out at the sessions too. But uh, Tanya was so great to work with. I mean, she's just, I mean, she's made, I did a previous video about her. I'm doing a couple of different songs from, than I did on the previous one now. Um, but it was just, it was great. She had like so much vibe and energy in the studio and it was really great. And I had worked with Glenn a number of times. So it was, when he'd come by, it was really great to see him. But I'm gonna give you some credits on here and then we will get to, get to listening. It was produced by Gary Klein, who I'd done a number of work jobs with. Uh, engineered by John Arias, assistant engineer was Chip Orlando. We recorded it at Sound Labs in Hollywood, Armin Steiner's old studio, and mastered by Mike Reese at the Mastering Lab. Um, so let me grab a song here. I'll pick one here, just get started. This one, okay, so let me get some credits going here. Hold on. This one is called we're playing games again okay on this one it's rick schlosser on drums myself on bass jay winding on piano dean parks and lee rittenauer on guitar with lee rittenauer doing the guitar solo jd manis on steel guitar uh background vocalists on this is ron hicklin uh, john baylor sandy hill debbie hall and jerry whitman it was arranged by Nick DeCaro, and the backgrounds were arranged by Nick DeCaro and the singers, and the concert master was Harry Bluestone. So this one is We're Playing Games Again. Let me pull that one up here, and we are off and running. <laughs> Yeah. 
Was written by Richard Kerr and Troy Seals. It reminded me a lot of like a Paul Williams song, especially the uh, bridge. The just it just had that kind of a, a thing about it. And um, that would be Frankenstein on all these tracks. Um, that's that was my go-to bass during that period. Still is pretty much. Uh, find another tune here. Uh, Lucky enough for two. Okay, let me get some credits here. Lucky enough for two. Myself on bass, Jay Winding on electric and acoustic piano, Fred Tackett from Little Feet on acoustic guitar, Lee Rittenauer on electric guitar, J.D. Manis on steel, arranged by Nick DeCaro, Harry Bluestone again, the concert master, and the um, musicians contracted by Frank DeCaro. I worked with Nick DeCaro's brother, Frank, was a one of the main contractors in town. I used to work with him all the time. We did lots of projects together. So this one is lucky enough for two. Here we go. <laughs> Lucky in love, 
was written by Henry Gaffney. Yeah, let's just grab a little. I mean, it's, it, it, she's had such an interesting life because she was, you know, this child wunderkind in the country, Mark. She started so young and you know, went through all this whole period. And then um, you know, just a lot of things came into her life and kind of just went, everything dropped down. But then she's had a resurgence over the past few years. And it's really wonderful. It's really great to see somebody like just, as they say, get their shit together and uh, and make a comeback like that. Uh, this one, let's see what this one's called, Rodeo Girls. Let me uh, find some credits for you on this one. It is Rick Schlosser on drums, myself on bass, Jay Winding on acoustic guitar. Uh, no, Jay Winding on piano, excuse me. Buzzy Featon on acoustic guitar, J.D. Manis on steel, Jerry Swallow on slide, and it was arranged by Jay Winding. So here, Rodeo Girls, let me get this one going. Boom. It's your horse, Wendy. On the side of the highway, trying to sleep, dreaming. She knows she can't keep He's back down the road Three or four rodeos Might have been her dream cowboy But she'll never know
That was written by Tanya Tucker and Joe Rainey. Okay, let's do one more here for you. Let me see what we got here. Uh, this one is called Stormy Weather. Let me uh, find some stormy weather on here. It is. It's Rick Schlosser. Now, Rick Schlosser played drums with James Taylor for a stint, too. He was part of the band. And we used to do a whole bunch of projects again. I believe he's moved to Mexico. I think he lives in Mexico now. Um, but it's Rick Schlosser on drums, myself on bass, Jay Winding on keyboards. The guitars, again, on this one are Dean Parks and Lee Rittenauer, Bill Cuomo on synthesizer, J.D. Manis on steel, Nick DeCaro on accordion, Emmy Lou Harris and Herb Peterson on background vocals, and arranged by Nick DeCaro. So let's uh, jump back over here. And this one, is again, is called Stormy Weather, and it was... Written by Tom Snow and Leo Sayer, both of whom I've worked for in the past. It becomes six degrees, I'll tell you. So here we go, stormy weather. Sometimes you can be like a stranger Moments when you're so far away in the night when we reach out to hold you you just turn away why do you turn away i love you so when you're smiling but your smile is faded overnight will we stay like this for a lifetime getting nothing right getting nothing right Tanya Tucker, the album Should I Do It from 1981. So I should do it. I'm going to 
get myself packed up here and check out of the hotel and head over to, I believe, the Orpheum Theater. And uh, I'll be doing my walk through. And, uh, and then we are going to showtime. It's been going great. It's been really fun. Audiences have been great. Band is just so ridiculous. God, it's just great. And just Lyle just brings it every night. And beyond his musicality, his storytelling, it's like I really don't know many people that that tell stories like he does. I keep thinking that I should just record everything he says during the show and then just transcribe it all. And it would really make for great short stories because it's really the way he talks it, it just it, he paints really pretty amazing pictures he has a, re, a remarkable uh, ability at storytelling i always think of him more like that horton foot kind of guy or you know van dyke parks same way who would just tell these stories and they just kind of suck you right in it's a it's a real gift because not many a lot of people most people get on stage and the talking part's really the, the most uncomfortable thing making the music's easy but talking to the crowds, another thing. And guys like this, they have that gift. It's really amazing. James Taylor was like that. We could be in front of 80,000 people and he talks like he's in his living room with somebody, you know, just, it's just at such an ease. So it's a, it's something else. So I'm going to get running here and then I'll be back later on today. So wishing everybody a great day on this Thursday. Talk to you later. Bye.